Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. You may remember this, this is the Denon Bluetooth speaker, a fairly expensive one, which effectively appeared to have a short in it. So when we connect the power, it draws a lot of current. And I trace that down to a chip which fits here. So this is actually the chip which manages the lithium batteries. So the charging and also switching between the power pack and battery supply. This was also getting warm with the thermal camera as well as reading a lot of low resistances and when I removed the chip, the short went away. So that was definitely faulty. As to whether there's anything else faulty, well, we can never be totally sure. But what I need to do is replace this chip. So I've ordered some, I'll just show them to you. And here they are, so BQ24172. Okay, I have a load of them. I ordered quite a lot of these, just keep them in stock now. They seem quite a common device, to be quite honest, and they were not so expensive. So these are the chips. The original one had a little hole or part of the surface was burnt which is another good indication it was actually faulty so I couldn't actually read this number I thought it was B0 or B0 thanks to some of you guys out there for telling me the correct chip okay so we need to fit one of these back onto here and this is where the fun will probably start so we have a chip yeah and you can see there's a pad underneath it there's two at either end and then quite a few down the sides 12 I think on both sides okay so we need to get that stuck down to there now I'm just looking underneath sometimes there's a hole in the PCB directly under the chip and that is basically there to make it easier to solder in this case there is not okay so how am I going to do this? Well, the technique I'm going to use is to warm up the PCB from underneath. This does have components underneath, by the way. Okay. But use the preheater to warm it up. I'm going to try to get a small amount of solder on this clean chip, which will help it to stick to that. Okay, so a very thin layer of solder. If I can do it, we'll try. And then I'm going to get the hot air and try to get this so the solder actually melts and then literally just pop the chip into place. Okay, we can see there's a dot in this corner and that will line up where we see a dot and a chamfer there. Okay, so it goes such a way round. Okay, you see there's plenty of flux on here. That's fine, it's getting flux on the chip now. So the idea being to basically get the solder to melt and then just literally pop this in place. And it should, all things being equal, pull into place by the surface tension of the solder. I may have to just give it a little bit of help. I have plenty of them, so if I make a, to use a technical term, pig's ear of this, <laughs> then I can have another go. If you would do it a different way, let us know in the comments below how you would go about it and why you would use a different method if you would use a different one. I think there's probably too much solder on here, by the way. So I've added some fresh leaded solder, but what I don't want to do is get too much in the center here so that when we drop the chip on, that kind of like squashes outwards and shorts to any of these pins down the side, okay? So it's very difficult to exactly quantify this, I think. Kind of get a feel for it is the best way I can say to you. Best advice I can give, yeah. So I have my soldering iron. There's no solder on it. It's set at 380 centigrade. I'm going to put a bit of flux on a bit of braid as well. This will probably help. Okay, flux on the braid. And I want to try to wick up some of that blob in the middle. Okay. 
like so and now let's try and flatten it again yeah that feels a bit better there's still a little bit of a chunk over here we can see there are actually holes but these are just like little vias they're not a large hole we do see some holes in the PCB by the way but these are in different places they're not where we want it to be so those are not under this chip if there was a hole you could actually remove all that bit from the middle pretty much stick your chip on and then from the other side just get some solder into the hole solder it down that probably makes it a bit easier but we don't have that luxury unfortunately on this one I did mention I would try to get a bit of solder on the chip itself there's a couple ways I've tried this so one is to hold this in one of these like third hand soldering tools this sort of thing but then you can only kind of like do one off the chip you have to turn it around and do the other off another way well we know we've got some flux on it so we could just try to add some solder to the soldering iron a small amount this is very fine 0.2 millimeter solder and kind of like hold the thing down yes I know it's on my workbench but this mat is pretty resistant and just drag some solder on you saw there I'll wipe the end of the soldering iron so it's clean now and then what is in the middle I'll try and spread that to the other side you see I've got a little pool of solder on there that is bits at either end so something like that you'll probably end up this way with too much solder in the middle of course but you can always try to deal with that as well and hopefully end up with the chip still on the bench and not stuck on the braid okay so that's got the thing tinned obviously if you're fitting one that's already been on the board and you just unsold it you don't have to worry about that step okay once more I'd be interested to know if you would have done that and if not why any particular reason or do you agree with me good idea yeah. Of course, I made a small mark on the map, but you know, it's a work mat, yeah. I'm just cleaning this off a little bit so I can see where the mark is. Yeah, we can see it now. Right. I think that looks good. Let's try this. So, we're warming this up. I usually find the thermo couple things just comes off the board if I tried to stick it on with caps on tape so I'm just going to touch it and see what we're at and we're about 40 degrees at the moment I can respond to a question the last time I was using this somebody wanted to know why my temperature meter was in Kelvin it's not it's in centigrade look K type K <laughs> that's why it says K not Kelvin one could question the wisdom of course of using a type of k when k is already a scale of temperature measurement <laughs> maybe that wasn't the best idea so it's not really warming at all at the moment so let's just turn it off so there's no temperature control exactly on this thing it just gets hot the more you turn it up the hotter it gets And it will take a little while because of the thermal mass of the actual PCB, okay. I don't think I'll actually get this board hot enough to actually melt the solder using just the preheater. Okay. It's getting warm. The trick with this is not to try to heat it up too quickly, just have a bit of patience yeah turn it up some more and probably the flux will start to smoke in a moment a little bit yeah 
So I'll turn this up more towards full now and let's put the chip on the PCB. So just get us the correct way round of course. The other way. Yeah. Pop it on the board. That's probably reasonably in place. I'm now going to turn the preheater up to full. I don't think that will solder directly. Let's see what happens. If it does, we'll see the solder melt and it'll pull into place. Uh, but more than likely, it'll need a little bit of help from the hot air. See, that's not melting yet okay right hot air and i want to just get the temperature above the melting point of the solder i'm holding this a few centimeters away maybe five centimeters away And I think now, can you just see that the solder looks like it's melting? Uh, okay, I think that's got it. So we'll turn the preheater down, back onto cold air only, and let's check afterwards if it's soldered. Okay, so I've put this under the optical microscope. It's not quite so clear for you guys, I think, but it helps me to see better. I think this is pretty well soldered. It's certainly pulled in line. There are one or two pins I'm a little bit suspect of. The fact it's pulled in line like that, and you can never be exactly accurate when you place these things, would suggest that the solder definitely melted and kind of it moves under the surface tension of the solder and it definitely appears to have done that what I normally like to do now is to take the soldering guy and put some flux down the edges and kind of like run along all the pins again down each edge and then let's see what it looks like okay guys sorry didn't record that bit what I've done is I've added some flux I use the hot air to warm the thing up, not to melt the solder. And then quite literally use the same technique as drag soldering. So a little bit of 0.2 millimeter solder, very fine solder. We don't want to get much on here. A little bit on the end of the tip. Okay, and then drag solder down the sides and across the ends. Let's see what we have now. Okay, so I've put it back together. Yeah, just connected the battery there. You see my bench power supply there, 13 volts. What's it do now? Do we still have a short? Oh, well, we've got a bleep. And it's lit up. Okay, so we got a bleep out of it. It lit up. This now appears to be working. It's drawing, well, you can see there, it's flicking between about half an amp and not very much. The battery is probably totally flat, so I would have thought that would have settled a little bit more than that, to be quite honest. Let's see what voltage is on the battery. Yeah, 7.85 volts. That seems about right, to be honest. Okay, so the battery is charged. I'm not quite sure why it's behaving in the way it is doing. In fact, the power supply now seems to have settled down in actual fact, but it's a fairly low current. Of course, the camera moved. Let's see if it runs from the battery. It appears to be trying to attach to the Bluetooth, to be quite honest. Well, it certainly has power coming from the battery, that's for sure. Okay, let's try the usual thing then. So, I have my phone paired with the speaker now.
I hear some sound. Very quiet. And now it's dropped it. That's interesting because it's playing then after a few seconds it goes quiet off on see a couple of seconds I can still hear it now but quiet hmm I find this quite strange guys, so it's... Yeah. And I'm sure you can see on the bench power spider what it's doing, so it doesn't drop the current 100 milliamps. Now I have to say, that's a bit strange, but it's a different problem to the one the customer suggested, yeah? Ah, that explains it. We're now choose the phone, yeah? <laughs> so turn the volume up. And that's on battery. Yeah. We can dance in them days, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, so definitely working. Yeah, a bit of a strange thing that we had the volume down on here. It'll give you a few seconds of sound and then go quiet eventually. We'll uh, take that off in case there's some copyright issue on that one. Okay. I was just putting this back together by the way and realized I hadn't plugged this one in which is no that why the volume control buttons here weren't working yeah okay so I've put it together a bit more it's still not screwed down yet but definitely working now look this is flashing And the volume controls work okay so this one happy definitely going to go back to the customer let's see what happens but should be good i hope you enjoyed that one get down there let me know what you think yeah a little bit of soldering really obviously there was the diagnosis in the first video i'll link that of course to this one you can see the whole job and I look forward to seeing you all soon again on learning electronics repair ciao for now guys